This is the Marvel panel, not the DC panel. We expect some energy. Come on! Breaking into comics is like breaking out of jail. Is that once one person finds that way, it becomes closed and you have to find a different way to get in. There's no better way for you to get your comic out there and get yourself exposed and get your work into the hands of the right people. We want to see what you're working on now, not what you were working on. I don't need the pictures that you take off your grandmother's refrigerator that you drew when you were in first grade. And I swear I've had those before. <laughs> Going from meeting art to walking through those DC offices to just bringing in the cover the next day and the guy happens to quit while I'm handing in that cover to where I am today at Marvel. I don't know how I got here, uh, but it's, it's, been, it's been a pretty lucky and, and fantastic ride. Well, you know, outside of the jet lag, it's, it's always wonderful to come here. It's, it's, it's an easy transition from New York to London. It really isn't that big of a difference. It's just the hours and the sleep that sort of get to me after a while. British writers and artists have been a part of the comic book industry for decades. Uh, you know, the, 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 there was a British invasion that happened many, many years ago. Uh, so, so British artists and writers have always been a part of the Marvel family, just the comic book world in general. Uh, you know, it, we all seem to work very, very well together. And actually, some of the greatest writers and artists we have in the, in the history of comics have come from the UK. Well, I was on a thing called Marvel's Creative Committee out in the States, where whenever they were translating a lot of that stuff into Marvel Studio movies, I would come in as an advisor, like a consultant, and myself, Brian Bendis, and a few of the editors. When I was writing the comic itself, um, I wasn't thinking about the movies because back then Marvel didn't have a studio. You know, these these characters were never going to be movies at that stage. I, I was writing this 2002, really, to about 2006. We were brought in to give the Marvel Universe a fresh lick of paint to up upgrade it for the 21st century. The reason I actually made it um, a black guy, you know, who was Nick Fury, was uh, at the time Colin Powell was in charge of defence. That was my little nod and I made it a black guy for that reason so and I thought Morgan Freeman is a good kind of Colin Powell um, and Brian was like yeah but if he's going to be leading a super cool team let's make it someone a little bit younger and a little bit cooler. So Brian came up with the shaved head Sam Jackson. I think what you really find in the Marvel movies is that they cherry pick from all the best parts of Marvel. They cherry pick some ultimate stuff, they, they cherry pick some stuff from the classic universe, and they melded it all together to make something that was palatable for a wider audience than just the comic book reading audience. Anything is possible in the, uh, in the Marvel universe. One, one of my favorite characters obviously is Daredevil. There's, there's a new interpretation of Daredevil that can be done that can make it really, really simple. That's just a character that's near and dear to my heart because it, it was a character that brought me back to Marvel. Uh, but we have lots, lots of properties that I think uh, that if, if, if handled correctly can be really, really huge movie properties. In fact, we're working on a few right now, but can't get into that.